In this short video, I want to show you how to use Respondus to pull in and import question pools to use inside your course inside of Sakai. And I want to show you a discrepancy that you can come across sometimes when you get that question content, that test bank content, directly from the publisher. So what I've done here is I have a course that I'm developing and I've got the question banks over here in the test and quizzes area. In fact, I'm working on several of these and the publisher has provided quite a swath of assessment content that I can use inside this course. Of particular note are this set of questions here for this 8.3 entry. I'm going to simply look at this so you can see what the questions look like. And of particular note, I want you to notice that there are 115 questions, and yet even though I pulled this content directly from the provided publisher's um, uh, question banks, they are not exactly complete. So for example, if I look for, um, say, some of these questions have some image content. So I'm going to look for some of the image content here. A lot of times there are figures or uh, tables that are being used in this particular course. And you can see then that that image is there, and that's good. So what I want to do now is let's go look at the next assessment, the, um, uh, let's do the next one in the set, the 8.4 assessment. Let's scroll down here to the 8.4 assessment and then look at it. And this is part of the review process after pulling some of this content in just to make sure it's all exactly there. I'm going to do another search for um, figures or above. They often refer to the figure above. Okay, here's one. So you can see here that it says using the above table, the gross domestic product GDP for the country is, and there's definitely some good information here, um, but the problem is students won't be able to refer to what this table is because it's not there. So how do you go about resolving this? Well, one of the ways you could do this is you could go and edit every single one of these questions. So if I scroll up here, you can also see that there's yet another one. There are a hundred and, uh, how many were there? They were like, uh, I don't know, 61 questions. It's quite a lot. It would be horrible to have to go through every single one of these questions just to have to edit the question, go back to the publisher, grab that one particular table that goes with that, that particular question, and make sure it gets inserted correctly. So there's another way you can go about doing this, and thankfully, Respondus gives us a way to do so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to simply go back out of the assessments, and before I do that, I'm just going to simply copy the title of this assessment here. I'm going to go back to the assessments area, scroll down to the 8.4 entry, and I'm going to remove it. Now once I've removed it, I'm going to go right on over to Respondus. And I'm going to use Respondus and the test bank network that it has access to and which publishers tend to help with and use um, to try and see if I can get mm, the same test bank. And likely you would think that they are exactly the same, but they're not. I'm going to go ahead and go to the start area over here and I'm going to create this 8.4 uh, assessment. So in Respondus here, I'm using Respondus to simply create um, a way to get at the test bank network and to get at it um, so that I can actually have those 8.4 assessment questions along with the images. Now, understand, if you want access to the test bank network, then you're going to have to go through and know the ISBN number of the text that you're using for the publisher that you're using, and then make a request using the Respondus official form on the Respondus website. Typically, Respondus gets back to you pretty quickly about whether or not you can be granted access or not, and they'll send you a couple of codes that you can then enter into the Respondus software and be able to get access to the test bank that you need. In this case, I've already done all that, and I'm going to simply create a new file for this particular test bank so that I can pull it into the course site. I'm going to click OK here. And because I already have access to the test bank, I'm going to select Test Bank Network over here on the left. When I do, I get another window that comes up that allows me to select not only from the text, but from the specific test bank that comes from that text. In this case, I need the 8.4 entry. Respondus makes this pretty nice and pretty slick in this case, because for this particular course, I only want the mm, multiple choice questions for the assessment. And so I can use the question selection automatic to select just the multiple choice questions entering 60 for the total number of multiple choice questions available in this assessment. I'll go ahead and select insert them into the list. And once Respondus goes through and inserts them, I just simply have a copy of all 60 of those questions that some of them have images and some of them don't. 
There we go. And I'll hit close in the top. And now you can see, uh, it's a little harder to see, but here toward the bottom, uh, those assessments have been inserted. And now all I need to do is simply finish up the process and import them back into the course site. To do so, I'm going to go to the Publish and Preview area, and I need to designate these points as decimal numbers, and then save it. I'll save it somewhere on my computer so I can get to that content. And now let's go back to the course and pull that content in. So now I'm back to the course, and I'm going to select the Import option here. And I'm going to choose the Export from Respondus as the file kind or type, and then choose the file. The file's right there, just off the screen, and select Open. I'm going to go ahead and import it. Now, depending upon the amount of questions and perhaps the number of files or, for example, uh, other images or tables that are associated with it, the file import process may take longer or shorter. Um, this is also somewhat dependent upon the internet connection that you might have uh, as to whether or not you're on a slower speed connection or if you're on a faster speed connection. And there we go. Uh, so here you can see that the assessment's been added with the same title that I gave it before. Well, I don't really want that title, but we'll handle that here in a second. What I'm really curious about is, did that image content come in for those particular questions that while the publisher provided the test banks didn't really come? So let me go ahead and select the action here and we're going to hit edit. And we're going to inspect the same assessment for to see if those assessment uh, questions have the actual tables and other information in them. So let's search for above. And they do. So here you can see question 36, using the above table, the gross domestic product GDP for the country is, and now there's reference to that table above. So when students take the assessment, they'll actually be able to, well, refer to the table above. And likewise for any of the images or the questions below, you can see that those are now included. So the only thing that's left to do is to go through and simply make sure that I've titled this assessment right. Um, I don't really want it to be titled 8.4, so in this particular case, I'll go to the select action and select settings and then I'll change the title of that assessment in the title area since I copied and pasted it earlier. I'll save it and now that assessment appears with the others in the sequence it should 8.4 with the image content that I needed to show. I'll move on to the next assessments and make sure that I use the uh, respondus data to try and make sure I pull in that image content as needed.